How are you all? Good? Good. Friday. That's right. Um, so, uh, well, just wanted to comment on a couple things that happened this week uh, and look forward a little bit to, to some stuff that's happening next week as well. Um, you know, the big news this week is the governor's budget uh, was put out. Uh, and, um, you know, as we said at the time, I think it's a, a, the right direction, a good, bold vision for Minnesota uh, to be focused on, on the future and really sets up a nice contrast with, I believe, where the Republicans are. You know, the Republicans uh, first bill was corporate and business tax cuts. They've already heard in tax committee uh, nearly a billion dollars in business and corporate tax cuts proposals. Uh, and that is clearly the priority that they want to uh, address this year. The governor, in contrast, uh, you know, is focused on building on what we did in the last couple of years, which is trying to rebalance that playing field that's been tilted against ordinary families for too long in favor of uh, elites and corporate interests. And uh, especially the investment in education, I guess the biggest reaction I had to the Republican response uh, was I was kind of floored by the fact that they uh, disagreed with investments in early childhood education. They said they're unproven, uh, that they don't work. Um, my suggestion is that they listen to Art Rolnick instead of listening to the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce on education and early childhood education uh, and actually do right by Minnesotans on that front. Um, but their main response was typical and it's what we heard during the campaign uh, over and over again, which is that uh, Democrats spent too much, uh, that they taxed too much, and that the governor is spending too much uh, right now uh, in his budget. Uh, Representative Doubt, uh, again, made the comment that he continues to make. I'm not sure what statistics he's looking at, but made the, count, uh, made the comment that our economy is continuing to do poorly, uh, all facts notwithstanding, uh, and that it's because of all the high taxes. And so I guess what I would challenge Speaker Doubt, who repeatedly says that actions speak louder than words, uh, is that he ought to pass a budget that gets rid of those taxes. He ought to pass a $39.3 billion budget, and the Republicans ought to stick uh, to their words and what they told people on the campaign trail. Um, and, uh, and if they don't do that, um, either they lied to the people of Minnesota when they were campaigning saying that they disagreed with the wasteful spending and all the taxes Democrats passed, or they lied with what's actually happening, which is that they're spending uh, nearly $750 million already uh, with no education built into that. So they'll be putting out proposals to spend at least a billion dollars. Um, and they have offered not a single cut not a single bill that they put in uh, has cut government uh, by any amount. So either they lied to Minnesotans when they said they thought that there was wasteful spending and the taxes were too high, or they're lying now, when, or they lied to them when they said they're going to fix transportation, and their first transportation bill is a pretty good indication of that, uh, when they said they're going to invest in long-term care, when they said they're going to invest in education and all the other things, broadband, investing in greater Minnesota businesses. Uh, they can't have it both ways. But I would expect with Representative Driskowski saying that we should give it all back, with Representative Dean saying we should give it all back, uh, with Sarah Anderson saying that $39.3 billion is the right amount, uh, that their budget that they pass, and this is before they go into negotiation with the Senate and Governor, so they really can't blame uh, the Senate and the Governor for a higher budget. The budget they pass ought to be $39.3 billion. And if they don't do that, um, they're not living up to uh, their principles. Um, one of those examples uh, of where they're uh, proposing to spend lots of money, and we'll see what happens, um, but that contradicts their actions for the last four years is on long-term care. And I'd like to turn it over to uh, Representative Murphy on that. Thank you, and good morning. It's good to be here with you. Uh, the balanced budget that we passed uh, and put into place in the last biennium uh, made the first substantial investment in seniors in long-term care in Minnesota in any number of years and certainly is in sharp contrast to the all-cuts budget uh, that the Republicans put in place in 2012. Uh, as I talk with my Republican colleagues about this, they want to say, you know, the past is the past and let's look forward. But I do think it's important for us to think about our recent history and understand how people have behaved when they've passed their budgets. And so I want to talk just a little bit about uh, the budget that we passed in contrast to the budget that the Republicans passed in 2012. So, and I know you both, you have this handout, but um, in 2011, the GOP budget uh, cut programs for the elderly and disabled by $330 million in order to protect corporate special interests. And this included a $133 million cut to nursing homes. And uh, that was the repealing of the nursing home rebasing that was in place in law already. They voted for a 20% wage cut for personal care attendance. And let me say, when we passed our budget last year, not one Republican voted for the funding for 
the increases that we put in place in Health and Human Services, including the funding for uh, increases for seniors in uh, long-term care. In contrast to what the Republicans did in enacting the first substantial increase uh, for nursing homes and long-term care in the budget that we just passed, we made investments for seniors and the disabled totaling $232 million. That increased, uh, that included 5% uh, increase for nursing homes and a 3.2% increase due in this uh, year, in 2015. Um, we made seniors a priority in many, many ways uh, in our budget, both in policy and in our uh, budget. And our actions, I think, speak very clearly. So while the Republicans don't want us to look back and they do want us to look forward, I think it's important for us to note the difference between what they've had to offer and what we've offered. They didn't want to pay for any of the revenue to put in place the budget that they are now supporting. And their eagerness now to spend money, I think, is in direct contrast to what they were talking about on the campaign trail when they were talking about a budget that was too big and taxes that were too high. And so one of the interesting questions for us this session will be, which promises do they keep uh, to Minnesotans? And what will their priorities really reflect? And we will see how that, um, that uh, future lays out for us. Uh, but I think they've made a strong commitment to seniors and nursing homes. That's something that we have practiced. That is something that we have done. And there are many members of our caucus from all over the state of Minnesota who support that. And we're going to make sure that we nudge the Republicans as hard as we can to keep the promise that they've made to seniors across the state of Minnesota. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Paul Marquardt. Good morning. Uh, in rural Minnesota, our nursing homes not only provide important health care services for our seniors, but in many cases, our nursing homes are our largest employers in our communities. And I want to use one example here. Uh, just a little over a year ago, Good Samaritan Nursing Home in Hoffman, Minnesota, it's a city of about 700, just west of Alexandria, had to close. And the administrator was talking about why they needed to close. And while they had the capacity to have 54 residents, because they could not find the staffing, they could not pay the staffing, they could only have 27 residents, only half of what their capacity was. And what he went on to say is that at $10 an hour, he said he could not attract the workers that he needed. And then he said, and we haven't been able to provide a raise for five years. And Representative Murphy alluded to those five years when things were frozen. And in the last biennium, Governor Dayton, the DFL-led majorities, despite having a $627 million deficit, said, we are going to make this a commitment and put into our nursing homes, into our home and community-based services, $230 million, despite a budget deficit. And so I think two points for that moving forward is, number one, uh, whatever rate increases we have need to go to our care providers, our employees, and staff. Those dollars have to go there. That's where the difference is going to be made. And second, if we can make a commitment of over $230 million to our long care providers in times of deficit, when we have a $1 billion surplus, certainly we can continue those major investments to our long-term care providers. So just a couple other things. I mean. Uh, you know, we, we do believe that we should pass the long-term care bill uh, and rate increases uh, for home and community-based services as well. Um, you know, Representative Baker, Dave Baker from Wilmer, made the comment, um, you know, as a freshman legislator, I'm embarrassed that we allowed this to happen and told nursing homes that help is on the way and if it doesn't, we shouldn't be in these seats. So I would encourage all of you to ask Representative Baker whether he thinks Speaker Doubt and Majority Leader Pepin and Chair Schumacher should resign because that's exactly what they did during their time in charge. Uh, I think that's a very fair question uh, to be asked. Speaking of Dave Baker, um, the priority, uh, 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 he said his top priority was transparency. Uh, but again, on the floor yesterday, if you noticed, he refused um, to encourage his, uh, his chair of elections and government operations, Chair Sanders, and Chair Sanders refused uh, to hear uh, Ryan Winkler's bill on, on transparency and making sure that the independent expenditures that um, we saw so, so significant and so heavily in the last election are at least disclosed. So you uh, and we and all the people in Minnesota can see who's actually spending that money. 
Uh, that's disappointing that, again, Dave Baker's top priority, he's not willing to stand up to what he said on the, on the campaign trail. And the last thing I guess I would just note, speaking of transparency, um, Representative Driskowski and uh, Roz Peterson continue to dig their hole a little bit deeper and deeper on these property tax hearings. Um, they had a meeting last uh, earlier this week uh, in Burnsville. Uh, you know, they, there was chairs available, plenty of space available on the evening, uh, and Representative Driskowski uh, said, well, he kicked out a, a, a camera person, or someone who wanted to record the public meeting, saying it was a private meeting. So there was space available. Representative Driskowski said it was a private meeting that night, uh, and Ross Peterson backed him up. Uh, the next day, he told reporters, uh, in fact, that it was a public meeting, contradicting what he said the night before, and that there was no space available, which was false. And I don't know kind of which is worse, uh, whether the fact that they continue to want to uh, hide these property tax hearings uh, or whether not telling the truth, uh, which is, seems to be the MO that's going on with this, um, with Representative Rzykowski's property tax hearings uh, across the state. Um, but uh, if, the, uh, if the key for this legislature, as, Rep as Speaker Doubt and everybody else has said, is we want transparency and openness, um, Representative Juskowski's and Roz Peterson's actions certainly aren't moving in that direction. Uh, Representative McNamara, who wants to make um, the Lassard sams committees private instead of public, uh, is not going in that direction. Uh, we're seeing kind of, again, saying one thing and doing another. And uh, I think uh, it's a, actually an interesting story that's going to probably play out for the rest of the session here. And with that, we're happy to answer any questions people might have. on the minimum wage this session. The chamber said they were interested in getting rid of the inflator. Are you guys hearing anything on that? Um, I haven't heard that except from the chamber, and I, I don't think that will happen. I don't think Governor Dayton is going to allow that to happen. Uh, Governor's big transportation proposal came out earlier this week. Um, the, the, the perceived need that everyone is talking ar about around here, advocates, came from the TFAC report, which I came out uh, Around the time you guys uh, took the majority, something I've been hearing a lot from Republicans asking them about Governor Dayton's proposal as well. If this was such a big problem, why didn't the, the DFL do it in the last two years when they had total control? What, uh, any thoughts on that? Sure. Uh, we've always said all along that this needs to be a bipartisan effort, which is what, um, which is how we've always handled transportation issues uh, in Minnesota. And we are saying again this year that this would be a bipartisan effort, and we're willing to put up uh, for a package that is comprehensive, that is long-term, uh, that deals with the statewide issues, that includes transit as well as roads and bridges. Uh, we're willing to put up our proportionate share of the votes, just like we asked them to do last year. Uh, so we're actually willing to step up to the table this year, as we were last year, as the Republicans have never been able to, are willing to step up to the table to solve the problem. So you asked them last year if they would put up enough votes to pass something in, in the House, is that? Yeah, and they, well, it was very clear that they were going to refuse to do that. How do, uh, <clears throat> uh, the governor's rec budget recommendations included a series of uh, tax tweaks and changes. Um, how does it compare to previous tax proposals for his last two budgets? Um, or, uh, how would you characterize it? Well, I think that the, the biggest piece of his, of his proposal uh, makes, uh, makes good sense. Um, in terms of the, the tax credit for, for um, child care, uh, for caregiving, I guess is what it is. Uh, I think that's exactly the right priority as opposed to the corporate tax cuts. Um, I think that, um, well, I think I'm going to let Representative Marquardt talk a little bit about the property tax piece of it as well because I think that there is some relief in there that people aren't talking about yet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, the governor put out the transportation plan on Monday. And we know that actually the largest source of dollars that go to roads and highways and bridges from our local units of governments, our counties, cities, and townships, actually come from property taxes. And so the fact that the governor has $2.3 billion of tra new transportation funding to our county, cities, and township are really going to relieve a lot of pressures on property taxes. There was a study done not so long ago where you looked at what's called own source revenue, and that's when you take away all the highway funding, all of that, what is left for counties and local governments to spend their property tax dollars on. The largest single factor was property taxes, which is actually more revenue towards roads than the gas tax or the license tab fee or the market value or the uh, motor vehicle sales tax. So, the governor, uh, while not directly in his budget proposal, 
has a lot of relief on the property taxes for local units of government in his transportation bill. I'm wondering what uh, you guys are hearing. Uh, it's been uh, about almost a week since the governor rolled out his proposal. Uh, details of it have been circulating since longer than that. I'm wondering what you've been hearing from constituents uh, as a reaction to it. Not so much the, the spending side. I'm sure you've heard people talk about the need to, to fix roads. But uh, the particular ways that the, the governor is, uh, is proposing to raise that money, what are you hearing on, on the, the gas tax and, uh, and oh, other the transportation bill? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think what people appreciate is that the governor is actually has actually come up with a realistic plan that addresses the problem long term. Uh, that's what everybody said they wanted to do, uh, and the Senate, you know, has stepped up as well. Uh, what we haven't seen is the Republicans actually do what they said they want to do, which is solve the problem long term. Uh, the proposal they put in, and people get this, is not going to solve the problem uh, at all. So I mean, I think I think people appreciate the fact that he's put a proposal on the table that's actually going to solve a problem that everybody recognizes is needed. You know, there's just too many people out there that are dealing with potholes that can't get to work or to get their kids to school or get to the doctor as efficiently as they need to, and that's what this is all about. Senator Mark said yesterday that uh, in his mind, if, the, if a long-term <coughs> transportation package is passed this year, that they won't be able to do it until at least 2017. Um, do you agree? I, I think it gets harder and harder the closer you get. And I, you know, frankly, I just don't see any interest on the part of the Republicans uh, so far. And they have said over and over again, both Chair Kelly and Speaker Doubt, uh, that they don't think that they can do a long-term uh, transportation plan. Uh, I mean, it really is early in a biennium to be waving the white flag, but that seems to be where we are. But I, I don't think Senator Bach is that far off. There seems to be some disagreement about the number. Um, Republicans say they still need to explore how big the problem is in terms of transportation. I guess, do you guys think that there's room for negotiation there, or do you see it as big as Dayton and the Democrats say? Well, you know, uh, Speaker Doubt makes a big deal of the fact that he's been here for four years and he thinks that's a huge advantage. Uh, sometimes that's not an advantage because people have studied this problem for a long time. Experts outside the Capitol, private sector experts. You know, I, I don't know what Tim Kelly and Kurt Doubt are going to, what they're going to bring to the table to figure this out more than these experts that have studied the problem for several years. So I think the $6 billion number is, is in the ballpark in the right range and, um, you know, Again, instead of listening to the experts who actually know something, they're listening to the Chamber of Commerce, not surprisingly, but that's, that doesn't make any sense to me. And I also would say that, uh, Here, you know, I don't know what they were doing all summer and fall um, if they're not able to put their hands around the issue because anywhere that I went, Minnesotans were talking about transportation in their communities, on their highways, um, from a work perspective and from a family perspective. So to me, it is clear that we have a, a statewide issue that we need to wrestle with and resolve and it's going to take a revenue source and some um, bold leadership. And I, I, I see that coming from the governor, but I'm not, I'm not seeing that yet come from the Republicans. It's easy to see that in order to, you know, bridge this big divide between Republicans and Democrats that, you know, one, if not the only possibility to do that this session is kind of a grand bargain. Is there anything that, uh, that Democrats did in the past two years that you might be willing to do away with in order to get the revenue to, you know, pass a long-term transportation package? No one has suggested any particular grand bargain to me. Uh, and, um, you know, and I, I think the, I mean, the, the reality is the investments we made, I think, are very popular. All day kindergarten and education investments was more than 80 percent. Uh, and if you count higher ed, probably more than 85 or 90 percent of the new, 85 percent, probably the new investments that we made. Uh, I don't see anybody wanting to go back on those investments. And so I'm not sure what, uh, I'm not sure what that piece of the grand bargain would be. What's become of the deficiency funding bill that I thought was the governor said was important to pass? And my understanding is that it's, it's, uh, it's uh, now moved through the two committees, will probably be in ways and means at some time uh, soon. I, but, I, you know, I think that there is an urgency to get this done. There's, um, uh, and, and uh, there is an urgency to get it done. I mean, it's, it's public safety at St. Peter. It's public safety around the uh, Ebola issues. Uh, you know, these are things that people want to go. It's, it's funding for seniors. Um, we need to get this done. I, I'm not sure what the lack of urgency on the, side, on the part of the uh, Republicans, you know, or the f Senate, frankly, uh, is. But uh, we agree with the governor that we need to move it as quickly as possible. On the uh, transparency problems that you brought up earlier with the uh, property tax listening sessions, <clears throat> uh, are you guys planning any action on that or are you just sort of highlighting it to uh, 
avoid any situations like that in the future? Well, I hope that we can avoid any situations in the future. I mean, it's just striking to me kind of, uh, A, as a pattern, and B, that the story keeps changing, you know, and, um, uh, you know, if they don't want, you know, if Roz Peterson doesn't want her public, these meetings to be public, if she wants to kind of just have her supporters in the room, she should tell people that instead of announcing it as a public meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think there's another one up in Anoka tomorrow, uh, the new member, I have never met her actually, Whelan uh, has one up, uh, Representative Whelan has one in Anoka tomorrow with Representative Driskowski, uh, and it sounds like, in fact, that they are going to allow uh, it to be an open and public meeting and let anybody who wants to attend, attend. So I hope that that's what happens in the future. All Thanks right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.